Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. We got Shafir going up against Terran C again with this kind of ugly, and even here, like versus the brown, it's kind of close. Not exactly. This color, whatever. Mustard green, we have, <coughs> excuse me, Darren C at the 12th o'clock. This is on blue Bastic Demon. This is Shafir in brown as the Protoss bottom left-hand corner. I think this is a B, again, people in chat, or people in chat, people in comments can let me know, or people who've played a lot in the BSL will let me know whether this is, because there's a lot of Brood War that I missed. I didn't catch everything from, because there was a lot of Brood War between what, when, it was like 2013, and I kind of took a pause until about, I don't know, 2000. 16, 17, somewhere around there. Then I started watching casually again, and then I got much more hardcore into it. Point being, I don't know if this was a map that kind of happened in the meantime that's kind of one of those throwbacks, because I know that some of the newer players that are hopping in, yeah, they're new players entering Brood War. You'll have, like, maps like Blue Storm, where... Actually, it was interesting. I was watching on... Uh, I think it was a King of the Hill that 80s Mullet was doing. And he uh, brought in an old player by from an old team known as SMI named Spades, and he was really active in the Blue Storm era. And he was playing a very good, and he was just coming, like he hadn't played in a really long time here, builds by the way. And they, he was playing a, a very good player, I can't remember who, that'll save any embarrassment. Um, not that, I don't think there's a lot of shame in losing in the King of Hill matches, to be honest, just cause it's, you know, matches. But Shades was, or not Shades, Spades was very, very out of practice. Just because he hadn't done anything. Two gate opener, by the way, from both players, as is typical on this map. This is honestly a little Blue Storm esque. And I'm wondering if that is intentional, although I know Ascension was the most recent um, official remake of Blue Storm. But anyway, just because he knew that map from the bygone era and had practiced it so much, he ended up really decisively winning. Defensive anti manor pylon in Duran C's base. No second pylon just yet. Looks like that's going alongside the gas. I'm wondering actually from positional, I wonder if anyone's done this sort of analysis with the pylons in position versus, because in theory that speeds up gas mining, right? I wonder how many matches are decided because of that. If that like significantly increases the win rates on positional spawns where you have the north assimilator. Or if anyone's even done analysis into that. It'd be nice to see. A gas steal. Wow. A gas steal from Darren. So he's going to force the uh, he's going to force zealots at a Shafir. He's going to try to get dragoons for himself. Really, the theory behind this is, is yeah, okay, you lose, you're, you delay that gas, you get dragoons out, you be a little bit aggressive on the front, or at least you threaten aggression on the front, and you end up winning through micro. Let's see if Shafir has a counter for it. He's got his own probe sitting in the natural, kind of curious. So he's just going to go, I guess, two gate into expand to try to follow this up. Probe taking a little bit of hits. Yeah, he's just going to go straight Nexus in the face of this. That's dangerous. And I think Darren saw it. I mean, he saw the probe in position. He saw everything else. Maybe he will go Expansion Forge cannons to try to defend. This is almost playing like a uh, Zerg, to be honest. Sometimes Zerg players will do this, where they'll just opt to take their natural and take the gas there and try to even things up that way. Darren... Comparatively, opting to skip. Wow. So he's skipping Dragoons. He's going to get a Nexus for himself. And it'll be a little bit behind. And we do see that, yeah. We do see that Forge. One critical thing here is Shafir has an opportunity. Ooh. Probe stole some gas. <laughs> I always love it when I do that. Offensive. It's You see that more against Terran. This is almost looking like a, a TVP more than anything. Um, very slightly off meta here. Two zealots in position. These four zealots should be able to move in and get a scout. And because this zealot is working on the assimilator, they're going to be outnumbered. But a cannon's warping in. But not before Darren C is going to be able to hop on and attack these units. So cannon's canceled. Probe sneaking through. It wants to get a spot at what's going on. Darren doing some nice zealot shuffling. Seeing that Nexus up himself is deciding to re-engage. Now he's outnumbered and needs to run back to home base. And he's got some troubles of his own. So Darren pulling a bit of a sneaky, but... Unfortunately, it might blow up in his own face. He's got that cybernetics core just now. Okay, no, the Zealots are going to stay at home base. Now this probe moving in, seeing everything that has been produced. So things stabilizing a bit <laughs> overall. So a little bit of a nutty opener. That assimilator is still up. 
The big difference for Darren is he has all opportunity to... Oh, is he going to kill that? Yeah, kills that probe as well. He's going to have all opportunity to go whatever tech he wants at this stage. He can go DT, he can go Observer, and he might opt to just go straight DT, which again is going to force more cannons on the front for Shafir. Shafir just with a slew of Zealots. So I'm wondering if he might even opt to go Citadel of Adun to follow this up and go for his own timing off of that in a follow-up. Darren C has his own significant Zealot force with that shield battery out front, getting two Dragoons now to provide some supplementary defense, getting his Citadel of Adun up. So it looks like he's going to opt, and I'm wondering if he's just going to push to DTs. It, this is actually one of those scenarios where I th almost feel like the DT shuttle thing might work because you've delayed that gas for such a long period of time. Zealots making their way across. I think what they want to do is just get kind of a peek at the unit composition on the front, see if he sees any Dragoons or not. Fight, or that's that five, four. Four gateways being plopped down. The other opportunity for Shavir is since he put down that forge anyway, go ahead and get weapons one, right? Or go ahead and go for the upgrade battle. Four gateways versus robotics. Yeah, and I think that's what he's going to go for. He's going to go for a DD drop in the main. Zealot's kind of dancing towards one another. The other thing is, is because of that gas being stolen earlier, that limited the early Dragoon count, which means there's going to be fewer Dragoons to provide any sort of defense against a sort of drop. Shafir realizing the close reinforcement points, plus he's got that cannon to pull back to. He's going to go ahead and press forward. Two Dragoons moving up just in case they get a little bit too greedy. So I'm expecting a shuttle DT, and for Darren to try to push something on the front as a distractionary force... Four Dragoons just now being built, still no observatory, and a shuttle back here to try to go for the main. Kind of drop over the ridge. We'll see. That is what I'm expecting. Doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. We do see one DT being built, four gateways being plopped up. There are two cannons on that front door. And keep in mind this Dragoon count needs to stay with the main attack force as well to try to provide some defense, because if, if they're lagging and out of position, then could cost an attack on the front. Observatory to follow this up just in case there were DTs in the background because keep in mind Darren is also in the dark. A probe moving up to the 9 o'clock position just to make sure that that wasn't a sneaky base that was taken. And also maybe to kind of get, kind of stake a claim, put a pile on there. So you can see, either you can get it yourself or you can kind of see when it happened. So DTs are out. They're going to scoop up in that shuttle. Leg speed is just about finished. Observer should follow this up. And now the question is, is that I think a critical comp component of this, though, is, is that Darren pushes with an attack force comparatively. The timing of this, though, look at Shafir. He could smell that out and knew it. So he's got it, his cannon warping in. Still might be some free probe kills, though. A little bit of a probe freak out there on that edge. So he knows his build orders. He knows his timing. But the D there are 40 ETs and two Zealots might be able to get on top of that cannon before it warps in. Probe's in flight, one down. I don't see any Robo if they focus that cannon. DT's on that cannon now. The Probe's trying to defend it. They are grouping up. It's down! Dark Templar having a field day in here now. Might be able to take care of that shuttle. That shuttle trying to make its way out. That Robo is... Actually, I don't think that Robo's going to get up either. So maybe some Probes can sneak a cannon somewhere in here. But otherwise, I think that is game. Darren able to get the Sneaky Snake Maneuver... Take out the robotics facility and invisible men, I tell you. Invisible men. Now working on that main nexus. And that is going to force Shafir, I think, into an all-out counterattack. Honestly, all that Darren needs is a single DT at home base, and he should take this match, though. Weapons 1 about halfway finished, so might be there with the follow-up. Moving, interesting, moving all of his units back. I'm kind of curious what the reasoning behind this is. He has no observer, though. Okay, he did get an observatory down. He's got that second robotics facility. Still, this is... Such a, losing a base like this is such a huge loss. Placing a pylon here just to blockade a third. Honestly, Darren, yeah. Darren has a deathlock now. Even taking out the forge. Might lose these DTs to an initial observer. But the differential, I just think, is too large. And I'm honestly shocked that Shafir is trying to fight this one out instead of move on to his next match. I think it's a little bit one of those salty annoyance things where he's like, nope. Gonna stay in it. Uh, moving out with that probe uh, along corners. Because here's the thing, Darren, to follow this up, because it, with his attack force, 
still is going to be able to take a third at will, continue to tech at will, continue really to do whatever he wants. His observatory is pumping observers, so and he's going to have eyes on that as well. Level 1 weapons. Finally, the observer out running after those DTs, but they've done their work, right? Oof. They have done their work. Taken out. Shafir moving up to go ahead and retake his nexus. Honestly, I feel like Shafir's best maneuver here is just pull all probes, pull everything, and try to attack forward. Darren's observer getting hunted down. He's scouting out for knowing his situation. He's looking to see if there's any ninja expansions that were taken from Shafir. Instead, seeing just a probe. He's going to have Psystorm finished, a DT, just in case there, this attack force decides to get aggressive. It looks like it is getting aggressive. This is six gateways out. This is all Darren needs to do is just pump units. And then when he feels comfortable and feels like he has enough Storm, go ahead and walk out and engage that attack force. Now Shafir engaging. Did not pull probes to do it. A single probe actually here. Counterwise, great Storm over that back Dragoon line. Nice micro maneuver from Shafir to move out of it, but the Zealots right on top. Zealots on top of Zealots and just re-engaging anything. A High Templar feeling very comfortable just standing in the midst of this. And I imagine after this engagement, we're going to see a GG from Shafir. At least that's what I would expect. And here's the thing. DTs, even if they're spotted by those observers overhead, they're still just beefy damage units. And there's GG. Oof. Surprise, honestly, I'm surprised Shafir didn't just drop everything and do full A move with absolutely everything. I feel like that's the best maneuver when something like that happens. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that one. We will move on. So for YouTube, we will move on to... Uh, I'll go ahead and stop the vid and talk to chat separately. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.